Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples on a lovely Florida Friday. I have to say that the weather is starting to cooperate. It's 73 degrees this morning. The humidity is low. I'm not already dripping. There's no mist on the car since I brought it out. And uh, all in all, that makes me pretty damn chipper because that means that season is coming. So not only does business pick up a little bit, but the weather becomes glorious. And that is really what we're all looking for, especially after this miserable hot, sweaty, jungle summer of, you know, mosquitoes the size of NFL linebackers and, you know, humidity in the air so thick you can feel it. Uh, you know, this is much better weather. And it's going to get crappy by the time noon rolls around, but at least it's a start, and that's important. Uh, also, before we get into it, a little bit more news. Um, I have started a new channel for Audi Europa that's going to be just focused on the cars that I have for sale. And this channel is going to become fully dedicated to reviews only. Uh, you know, I may still have a for sale car on there, but it's always, you know, for the last few years, I've tried to give my most honest impression of the cars that I'm reviewing. But uh, people think, and you know, I can't really blame them, that there's a conflict of interest based on me selling the damn cars at the same time. But uh, if you have any doubts about the honesty, go look at the reviews of the Accords or the Priuses that I've done. And uh, you can feel the wafting hate coming from me as I do the car. Uh, but you know, that said, I've, uh, you know, read the comment section. People say, oh, what a, you know, car salesman he is. And I get that. So uh, there it is. I'm going to change it up. This channel is going to become just for reviews, and I'm going to make a new channel dedicated to selling uh, the cars that we have where I'm going to lie my ass off about how good the cars are. I'm going to lie like a rug. Uh, but this one is going to be very, very honest and proper. And, you know, we'll see what kind of cars I can find to review and uh, have a bit of fun with it. They're still going to be pretty normal cars. I don't know. I don't want to be one of these guys who reviews Lamborghini Espadas. I mean, they're neat, but, you know, who the hell can afford one? Um, so anyway, you know, I don't know what to name it. The the, uh, the This channel, I'm probably going to change the name from Monte Europa Naples to something more review friendly. Uh, but, you know, an old cranky bastard with a camera and an anger man management problem just seems too long a name so uh, you know I do read the comment sections a lot even if you don't think I do I do so uh, you know if you put any name suggestions in there you know maybe I'll pick up on one uh, that'd be great uh, the other one is just gonna be out of Europa and when I set it up and get it going I'll give you a link to that but uh, Anyway, here it is. So what do we have today? We have a 2007 Miata. Well, there I go. I've already screwed up. It's not a Miata. It's an MX-5. Uh, this is an NC, third generation Miata. Came out in 2006. Ran all the way through 2015. And it is a very controversial car, as is, you know, just about every other damn thing we ever do. But it, it truly is. It turns out that Miata guys, uh, they can be almost as annoying as the Porsche or BMW guys when it comes to protecting what they think they have. And if you remember, back in 1989, Mazda created the Miata. It brought out this, you know, variation on a British sports car, this two-seat, super light, open-top roadster. Uh, the difference between it and the British cars was that it actually ran and would stay running. Uh, it handled like a charm, and it became, <clears throat> you know, truly one of America's most beloved cars, uh, beloved by hairdressers and, you know, tennis playing ladies everywhere. Oh, I'm kidding. Well, anyway, you know, the tennis player hairdresser thing is partially why this is an MX-5, but we'll get into that. Uh, you know, a, a little disclaimer here, I have a love for Miatas. I race Miatas. You can see our little spec Miata there lingering in the distance. Uh, we took that to Homestead last weekend. I managed not to hit anything, which is always a plus. Uh, but anyway, they're near and dear to my heart. And this one has always been on the fringes, a little bit of a mystery to me. So, uh, you know, I went along with all the memes, I think that's what they call them, you know, of, uh, you know, the first Miata, the second Miata, and then they put a picture of a Sea Ray, and then the third Miata, that this was some big, heavy lug of a car, you know, kind of the El Dorado of the Miata world. But in fairness, that isn't true. This car is the product of uh, a very loving, 
development team that tried to stay as true to the original as they could while improving it in every way they can. And since the new Miata has come out, this ND Miata, uh, these things have gone way down in price, become very affordable. They're not much different from the NAs and NBs. In fact, they can be less. And it is a sports car bargain that anybody looking for a sports car should think about. So anyway, we'll get into it. Now you can see the styling is a little bit controversial. It's got those fender humps that came, uh, you know, they look a little bit like the RX-8, which uh, in fact this thing does share partially a platform with. Uh, you know, car companies are cheap and notoriously cheap, and they were developing the RX-8 and the Miata at the same time, and they couldn't come up with two independent platforms, so what they did was come up with one, and they basically shortened the RX-8 platform to make the Miata. Uh, difference, of course, being pistons versus rotary. Uh, and I think they did a pretty damn jo good job of it. Now, you know, it does look a little bit like a largemouth bass coming at you, but that's fine. You know, it's got those fender humps, it's got kind of good-looking rakish lights, it's got the, uh, you know, sort of happy mouth grill that Miatas are famous for. Uh, the ride height, okay, granted, it's a little bit high but that is something that's easily fixable. Uh, but styling-wise, you can see that they did a very nice job of the car. And uh, they made it, uh, obviously, a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, and, of course, a little bit heavier, but not nearly so much as, uh, you know, as advertised. You know, the people crabbing about it make it sound like it's a Cadillac, which it's not. The thing is less than 100 pounds heavier uh, than the prior Miata. And, in fact, it's much lighter than the 05 Mazda speed NB, uh, which uh, it has the same power to weight ratio as. You can see they added those big twice pipes at the bottom. That's an upgrade from prior versions. They changed the location of the uh, center brake light to on top of the hood from the middle of the trunk where it didn't make much sense. Very nice looking taillight assemblies. Uh, this is a grand touring model, it's called, so it has a few different bits and pieces of upgrades like Bose stereos and 17-inch wheels. Uh, they maintained the hardtop, uh, sorry, hardtop, softtop system, although you could also get a uh, power folding retractable hardtop, which, you know, again, you know, people say, oh my God, it weighed, it only weighed like an extra 80 pounds. Uh, the only problem with it is that it weighed an extra 80 pounds at the very top of the, uh, you know, uh, gravity field. So it sort of heightened the center of gravity of the car. For Miatas, I have a great friend who's a Miata aficionado, and he knows a lot about Miatas, and he's also a giant asshole. I, I, sorry for the language, but it's true, and he knows it's true, and he frankly gets off on it. Uh, I'm not going to name any names, but his name is Robert. And I asked Robert yesterday, you know, tell me about the NC. Tell me what you think about it. And man, did he go off. And he did the whole, you know, purist thing about it was too big, it was too heavy, it was, you know, they, they couldn't afford to make two cars, they threw a Ford engine in it. You know, all this stuff. It went on for like 10 minutes of negativity about Miatas. And I don't think he's wrong, except then he got to the part where he talked about how what a, what a great car the NC is. So, uh, you know, <laughs> it does have a little bit of a dichotomy going. Uh, they went from double wishbone suspension all the way around to multi-link suspension, which is very much an improvement. Um, you know, again, 170 horsepower under the hood of this car, a little less with the automatic, which God help us, this one has, but, uh, you know, like four horse less. But still a very nice free revving, you know, 16 valve inline four cylinder that they robbed from the Ford Focus. Anyway, look, let's just get into this car. Let's see what we got here. Things have all changed around. Uh, let me see if I can find the... See, I just don't know these damn cars. That's the fuel door. Where the hell is the trunk release? Truth is, I don't know. I know it has one up there. I think it's in the dashboard somewhere, but we're just going to use the key. Which This is a weird key for a Miata. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's pop this open. That feels very Miata-like. Nice little light trunk. Now, they did make this trunk bigger, so uh, they moved the battery from back over in this corner back up front, uh, and they still did manage to make it have great weight distribution. They originally put the battery here for that reason, but it was pushed way outboard. We'll get into all this in a second. So by, you know, doing that and changing the uh, spare tire into uh, kind of a patch and plug kit, uh, they did manage to get a lot more room in the trunk. I mean, you're not going to go to Costco and, you know, pick up all the 
toilet paper and paper towel rolls and eight chickens and you know 12 bags of broccoli and fit them in there but it's good enough and certainly good enough for a weekend trip you're not gonna have a problem there I don't know what's in this little container no that's where they keep the jack and this is probably the spare tire kit there but anyway a decent sized trunk uh, you know for a Miata that uh, does the job that it needs to do have a look under the hood Now, these cars are essentially identical from 06 all the way through 15. You know, don't be tempted to go out and buy the newest one because you're really not gaining that much. Uh, they did a little bit of a cosmetic refresh in, I want to say, 2008. But, uh, you know, if you wanted to, you could still do it to this one for a grand or so. You know, they're just not, um, they just really didn't change them. Here is a two-liter inline four-cylinder, which is, of course, very similar to the original Miata. That robbed a engine from the, uh, uh, I believe it was the 323 back then. Uh, this also robbed it from a 323, but primarily the Focus. Uh, they used things to lighten it up, like a plastic valve cover, a plastic intake manifold. They tuned the intake manifold, kind of a dual-stage thing. They moved the whole engine back like five inches uh, to help with the 50-50 weight distribution and as such we're able to put the battery now under the hood so uh, that cleared up some trunk space and using all of these little tricks they did manage to keep the car not terribly heavier than the previous versions despite its heavy reputation uh, you can see everything nice and neat under here very clean you can see ABS brake stuff which this has uh, you know here's another thing about this car it is much safer and more substantial than the prior Miata. So if you need to have, you know, a sports car, a fun car that you can use as a daily driver, that you can take on trips, that, you know, you want to be able to go to work in, this is a better choice than the NA or NB. Um, you know, if you're T-boned by an SUV, you're going to appreciate the uh, side airbags, you're going to appreciate the structure of the car, the taller belt line, um, you know, the seats, eh, I don't know if they're any more comfortable, but they're bigger, they're wider they give you a little bit more room inside and uh, you know the car again is more substantial than the prior version so that does count for something uh, styling aside the hell with it we'll just keep going uh, so anyway there it is uh, double overhead uh, cam you know 16 valve 170 horse 166 in this auto version and it is a fine fine engine and frankly much more receptive to tuning uh, than the uh, than the prior engines were so if you want to tune this with a turbo or, you know, do whatever you want to do, big injectors, that sort of thing, it's going to respond better than the earlier engines did, and you can get more juice out of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, leftover from the, uh, from the Ford parts bin, but it works fantastic in this car. And truly, as Robert pointed out, uh, you know, it was a leftover engine that went in the first Miata, basically. So they're staying true to their lineage. Let's get out of here. I can do that. Still a prop rod instead of hydraulics, which is fine. Let me give you a little power bulge there in the center of the hood. I think they had to turn the motor a little bit sideways in order to fit it under here. It was taller than the prior versions. Uh, there you can see the fog lights, nice big air grill, uh, nice suck in there for the radiator at the bottom. Uh, you know, is it handsome? That's debatable. It's up to you. But uh, it certainly does hold true to the uh, original Miata. They keep going, calling it a Miata. You know, they did dump the Miata name for this car and called it just an MX-5. So, you know, take that as you will. I don't know if that's a stab at hairdressers or not. Now, the soft top design in this car is the one that they wanted to put in the original Miatas but didn't have the money for. Uh, got cheaper. One little latch here in the center, which you undo. And then it is a Z-fold soft top. So, uh, instead of coming back like this with the uh, headliner exposed it folds forward and becomes its own cover which is a nice setup and it clicks into place with just one thing in the back and one thing in the front so uh, throwing the soft, box, uh, soft top back is not a problem at all you can do it from inside the car and uh, it's a nice easy top to use that seals better than the original soft tops on Miatas and again if you want the hard top you can buy one for this thing uh, these 
things, they look like roll bars, but I'm not sure they really are. Mazda doesn't call them that. They call them like back seat bars or something. So if you want to get a true track roll bar, you're going to have to add that on. But they do look nice. They have a built-in uh, center windscreen, which really doesn't work at all to keep wind noise down. But again, that's part of the Miata mystique. Uh, wind noise is something you kind of want in this car. Uh, before we get in, I'll point out that the brakes are bigger. Uh, you know, you're not going to have any issue stopping this car. It has incredible stop times. Uh, no issue with that at all. Uh, front and rear discs, obviously, ABS. And uh, this thing had stuff like traction control and stability control that prior Miatas just didn't have. You can see the interior also not just bigger but more substantial. Uh, I mean, for a Miata, this door panel looks like, again, something out of an Eldorado. Uh, you know, faux stitched leather, nice materials, weird little you know, silvery things with door poles, a place for your coffee or water bottles. No map pockets. Uh, that was to make the airbags uh, have enough space, which is a shame. So you're not really getting any kind of a 9 mil in there. Uh, if you're going to want to bring a gun with you, you probably have to keep it on you or, uh, you know, stick it in a, in a less convenient spot. Uh, seats, nice, comfortable, maybe a little bit more lumbar than I like, but good enough. And, uh, you know, it's not adjustable, so... Uh, they tried to make it neutral, not too little, not too much. They probably pulled it off, but I'm a no lumbar kind of guy. Uh, either way, the seats are nice, they're leather, and they keep you pretty, pretty intact when you're going around corners at high speeds. All right, let's hop in and see what we got. All right, fires to life with a nice little healthy Miata growl. Put our power windows down there. And you can see that things have changed. Get our seatbelt on. Oh, for the love of God, everything's a pain in the ass these days. Getting old sucks. I don't know if anyone realizes that. Probably a lot of people do. All right, so we got our seatbelt and let's see what we got. You can tell that Mazda really upped their game in terms of fit and finish, materials, design. You know, they're trying to appeal to a much wider audience. You have a, you know, pretty nice looking instrument cluster, I have to say. It looks like a, you know, chronograph from a Breitling or something. It's got a, you know, very nice uh, uh, set of gauges just where you'd want them. You got your fuel, you got your tack, you got your, uh, you got your oil pressure, you got your... Uh, water temp and you got your uh, speedometer and of course a little digital thing beneath them all where they're very easy to look at and easy to see uh, you got your lights over on this side you got your wipers on this side you got your radio and cruise control stuff on the uh, two stalks of the uh, three spoke steering wheel uh, with this one being that six speed automatic uh, you get your flippity flips on the wheel, which is nice. You can upshift, downshift. They're labeled. They work great. And uh, they do add a certain, um, you know, sportability to the automatic car. Which, again, it fits with this NC idea. Because if you need one car to commute to work, you know, the stick is great. And everybody loves a stick. And a Miata should be a stick the same way a 911 should be a stick. But it's also a pain in the ass if you live in a you know, city grid with straight roads and, you know, stoplight to stoplight. It's nice to be able to just put it in D and, you know, forget about it. So it is a bit of a trade-off. And when we go to the track with the shiftable thing, you can still, you know, bang your way through the gears and have kind of the trackish fun uh, that you might have had uh, sans the clutch pedal. Uh, but anyway, that's up to you. You know, debatable is what it is. Nice little vents. Uh, again, still the same size as uh, gauges that you can put in there aftermarket gauges if you turn it into a race car uh, you know weird little shiny piano black bits that look strange in a Miata you're not expecting this sort of level of of uh, you know fit and finish uh, you've got sound by Bose which has like seven speakers and a really radical program that doesn't just change the volume of the radio with the top down if you have that uh, going it changes the dynamics of the music to make it more <clears throat> you know more amenable uh, you've got all your climate controls there, you've got your heated seat stuff there, all very nice. You've got your gated shifter, uh, your power windows, your cup holders, uh, your e-brake in a weird spot over by the passenger. Uh, we got a glove box with a set of books in there, all very nice. Everything very simple, uh, as it should be, with just a 
Look at that Miata with our retarded detailer coming in. Oh, for the love of God. Anyway, that'll just put me in a bad mood immediately. Um, weird little sun visors, I have to say. Very, very strange the way that, I mean, they're kind of cool, but they're also weird. Uh, I guess you could put stuff in there, uh, credit cards or insurance documents, but, um, yeah, I don't know, a little bit weird looking. Let's go for a spin. <clears throat> nice cold air conditioning, too. Very civilized. <clears throat> All right, the steering is, of course, phenomenal. That is one area where they retained the sportiness. Lock to lock is lovely. The feel from the wheel is lovely. Uh, this one does not have power steering, nor would you need it. I mean, it is just absolutely perfect and easy for a weak old guy to turn, even at no speeds. And the road feel it gives you is fantastic. I can't see anything with the sun. But here was what was the most important part and the most important challenge facing uh, the Miata engineers is retaining the joy of driving that the NA and NB models had. You know, this car has to be fun to drive. If you take that out of a Miata, you have nothing. You have absolutely nothing. The whole point of this car is that it's the joy of driving. I'm gonna go just leave it in D. We'll see how it shifts itself before I get into the paddles. Very nice. Okay, obviously quicker than my NB. Uh, you know, gets up and moves. Zero to 60 is a little under seven seconds. Quarter mile is about 15, which is great. Uh, you know, it's, it's absolutely great. Uh, you know, this car just intuitively follows your every command. You feel, I mean, I'm barely touching the wheel and it instantly registers, uh, you know, with the, uh, with the tracking of the car. Uh, the feel of the brake pedal, perfect, absolutely perfect modulation, no fade. Um, you know, they did retain the joy of driving. If you want, you can kick the tail out. And here is the thing about the Miata, is, you know, anyone can take a Chevy Camaro ZL1 with, you know, 700 horsepower and go out and have fun not a problem. Just mash the gas pedal and you're going to be having fun. But here's the trick. This car is how you have fun at 40 miles an hour, within the speed limit, darting through traffic, taking corners, you know, amusing yourself. Uh, a guy who, you know, does professional driving for a living or an absolute novice can both have the exact same amount of fun in this car on a twisty road. And that is the absolute perfection of, uh, of how Mazda built these cars. Uh, they are accessible to everybody and uh, they do a fantastic job. Oh God, we're gonna get killed by this thing. They do a fantastic job of making uh, even a crappy driver like me feel like a hero and uh, a professional driver is gonna get out of the car with a smile on his face. And that's it. That's the whole reason Dutra for Miatas is to uh, amuse the driver. And the MC, this particular car, does it in such a way that it's a car you can pretty comfortably drive every day with reasonable safety standards. And uh, frankly, you know, maybe it's more substantial, heavier than that car, which uh, I love more than my family by far. But, uh, oh God, Jesus, look at this. This is our mechanic. Look at him. I mean, it's like he's holding a beer. It's a, we have no sleeves. We've got Marty there with no hair. I mean, you want to talk about, uh, you know, a motley crew coming to work. It just makes me want to go off into, you know, some other country and live in a cabin somewhere and not be around anyone. I just, I, I can't take it. I can't take much more of that. 
I have this sort of theory about sleeves that they proportionally relate to intelligence. Uh, and also, uh, I have a theory about skulls on cars, which is the same. So that the shorter the amount of sleeves on a person's shirt, uh, the lower their intelligence quotient. Ditto the amount of skulls you have on your car. So if you have one skull, you may not be a dumbass, but if you have 20 skulls, you're going to be a complete moron. Uh, I haven't scientifically proven this yet, but there's a lot of empirical evidence for it. Anyway, back to this real quick. So 2007 Mazda Miata NC, you know, I think Miata, I think, I think Mazda hit it. I think they got it. You know, obviously there's always going to be controversy when you're replacing an icon, but I think they did a fine job and I think these cars are truly a sports car bargain right now. Uh, if you have an interest, give us a call. 239-298-8000 on the web at aenaples.com. Uh, really appreciate you having a look, and um, we'll see you with the next one. And don't forget, again, we're going to do that new video thing, so if you have any name suggestions for a cranky old bastard like me, uh, let me know what it is. I you know, can't promise I'll do it, but I'll think about it. Uh, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Take care.